Welcome to Modern Gun Dog Training. Throughout this series of programmes, we're going to be exploring the training that goes into these little people, the working Cocker Spaniel. They're tenacious, loyal, and often very cheeky, but they make fantastic family companions and really good friends to have out of us in the shooting field and really add to the all-round shooting experience. We're going to start off with little people like Tartan here and we'll work right through the ages and stages until we end up with adult dogs like his mother and we'll be shooting over them in the shooting field. We'll be visiting shooting estates all across Scotland to do our training but also we'll be spending some time on public access ground just to go, which just goes to show that anybody with the time or inclination can find somewhere suitable to put the time, time and effort in to train their dog. We're going to be starting off with little people like Tartan here and working through right through the stages until we end up with adult dogs like his mother and other ones and we'll be shooting over them in the field in, in a variety of different situations. My name's Joe Hipwell. I'm from Sealpin Gun Dogs at Riddle Estate in the Scottish Borders. I train dogs full time, so it's what we do here. I learnt how to do this from my grandfather, Edward Martin. I compete with my Spaniels and have represented Scotland and we demonstrate our dogs all over the, the UK. But what I really enjoy and what I really get most satisfaction from is helping people get the best out of their dogs. And I hope together through this series of programmes we'll be able to do that. When choosing a puppy, there's lots of different things to think about. The time of year is quite important. We've got this little pup here, uh, a spring puppy. Um, it's April now and it's quite a nice day for April in Scotland. But it's always worth thinking about the time of year that you get your pup because it's a lot easier with good weather. So this puppy, we've had reasonable weather this spring and we're coming into hopefully even better weather. So she can be outside on some grass doing bits and bobs and it's really easy for house training them because it's you know nice weather to get them outside in and out and that sort of thing whereas in the winter you've got rain to deal with it's colder it's darker nights and that sort of thing it's actually the light in the evenings and the mornings is the thing to think about because for somebody who has to be outside a lot of the time light in the winter is quite a precious thing really especially if you're north of the border like us because there isn't a lot of it in certain months so with playing with pups and things in the summer you get all this lovely time in the mornings and evenings when you can be outside getting them socialized getting them some grass under their feet starting off a bit of puppy training and it's a lot easier in the summer but having said that you can do it with winter puppies just fine um, we've got a a uh, big light set up outside the kennels so you can do bits and bobs with them it's just not not quite as easy but it's worth thinking about um, the converse thing to think about is that if you get a winter puppy even when they're this small if, if even if it's more difficult now to take them out if it's dark in the evening actually those young dogs at you know six seven eight months when they're over being puppies then you'll be in the summer and you'll get good weather then and nice evenings for starting to train them so the swings and roundabouts, I would always prefer to have little puppies in the spring and summer, in good weather, when you can get them out onto some grass quicker and spend some time with them in the evenings. Because they're really crucial times then. If they can spend lots of um, time socialising and seeing lots and lots, which is easy to do with good weather, it's a good thing to do it um, when they're young and it's easier to do it at that time of year. When going to choose your puppy, don't get lured into the uh, tempting trap of taking two home. Uh, we always advise people only to have one puppy. Unless you've, uh, you know, you've had a few dogs and you really know what you're doing and you've got a specific reason to have two, particularly two from the same litter. Um, my grandpa's always says, if you have two, it doesn't double the amount of work, it more than, you know, more than triples it. Um, it's better to have one because you can focus on them, get them really socialized and you get a, get a good bond and relationship, you and the dog. Okay, this is Rapid. He's great fun. He's, his name uh, suits him really. He's very quick, really smart, quick little cocker. About four and a half months old, something like that. So we're doing some basic training with him. And the only training tool we need at this stage is this, a little tennis ball. Good boy. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna, gonna get him used to having fun around our feet. We're introducing him to hunting and quartering, but it's all hopefully for us. And he's a quick little monkey. And when I first started this, he was wanting to go a bit too far and things. So you'll see I'm using lots of body language, lots of vocal encouragement to have him close around me 
and look for a tennis ball. Good boy, good boy. Go on, rapid whiz it in. Good boy. See, I'm right down with him. Good boy, whiz it in, whiz it in. Because if I just stood up and left him to it, he'd be away like he is now. Come on, rapid, come on, boop, 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 boop. Good boy, hey. Come on, whiz it in, whiz it in. Good boy, whiz it, rapid, good lad. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to drop this. There, come on, rapid, come on, boop, 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 boop. Come on, come on. Good boy, and see if he'll find it. Whiz it, whiz it, good boy. And see, as soon as he finds it, look, good boy. His first inclination might be to run off and have a play with that or take it back to his brothers in the kennel, good boy. But I don't let him do that. I kind of hold him without being too firm. Just get him before he goes. And then don't take the tennis ball, just start stroking him, good boy. So he really gets the idea that it's lovely to be with me with something in his mouth, good boy. Good boy. Was it rapid, was it? Good fella, come on in. Good little man, eh? Good little boy, eh? Good lad, was it in? Was it rapid? Come on, was it boy? Was it rapid? Good lad. We've just dropped it again. Let's see if he'll find it. Good boy, was it in? Was it in? Good boy, good boy. Was it boy? Good boy. Rapid, come on. Oh, there he goes. Rapid, come on. Boop, 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 boop. Good boy. When you're introducing a cocker to the lead for the very first time, you don't want to go on a massive long walk with them and walk for miles. It just wants to be 15 yards. For the very first time you put them on the lead, just walk them around a little bit, get them used to it, familiarise them with it. If you overface them too much, pop the lead on and say, right, here we go, you'll end up with a fight and a struggle and them pulling against you, you know, like he is now, but you'll have it on a big walk. You're better to get them over this, get them doing it nicely in a small way then move on to um, you know, where you want to really use it on a, on a big walk. Um, otherwise, that's where people create unnecessary problems with dogs pulling on the lead when they really don't need to. You know, get the technique right, get them used to walking along with a silly bit of rope around their neck and then take them on a walk with it. Now, the very first introduction to the lead can be an interesting one because these cockers don't like it. They aren't born with a natural instinct to walk nicely on the lead next to you. In fact, it goes against all their uh, fizziness and energy um, to be next to you on a piece of rope behaving themselves. So we have to show it to them. And the very first time you do it, they never start doing it perfectly straight away. Um, we've got little Tartan here. He's never had the lead around his neck yet. He's used to just coming out with me, skipping around, racing around, throwing a tennis ball for him, having fun. And this is the very first time, really, he's going to have any form of sort of structural rules or steadying him up and what happens usually we'll see what he's like but usually when you put the lead on for the first time they act as if they've been caught in a snare you know they really don't like it try and pull against it and then maybe they'll sort of sit behind you and have a little sulk and not want to move and you have to encourage them on and that sort of thing so it's a it's a balancing act between come on good boy it's okay you know don't worry about it and actually a couple of little tugs to say look don't be so silly come on it's fine to walk along with me and then praising him when he's when he's doing it nicely. That's a good fella, hey? Good boy. So we've got the lead here. Good boy, Tartan. Good boy, hey? Good boy. Right, so we've got it around his neck. Good boy. And obviously we're working towards, good boy, having this nice and loose and him doing it really nicely. But this is the very first time he'll have it on. You see, he's never felt that sort of um, tension against his, his neck before. Good boy. So I'm just going to stand still and let him get used to having it on there. Good boy, hey? Good boy. And when it's loose, I'm going to say, good lad, good boy. When he's next to me, good boy. And then if he goes to pu pull against it, or be silly like this. Um, you know, just a gentle little tug. You know, don't be silly. Come on, come on, Tartan. Good boy. Good boy. Come on then. There's a good lad. Not too bad, is it? Hey, good boy.